deaths at national parks have been in the news a lot during the recent heat wave. One that got my attention was the 71-year-old man doing a hot weather hike at Death Valley. An L.A. man has died in the national park. 71-year-old Stephen Curry of Sunland collapsed outside a restroom at a trailhead Tuesday. I mean, I just did the Dancing with the Devil video about a hot weather hike at Grand Canyon. That could be me. I suppose with age, the reality of mortality is increasingly apparent. That's probably why oldies, what I used to call my age group, drive big cars. We don't want to die unnecessarily, like when a texting 20-year-old runs a red light. We know we are going to die, but hopefully from an expected illness, not from an unnecessary and unexpected car crash. Grand Canyon is my favorite place to hike, and it's no stretch for me to say that Cape Royal at dawn is one of the most beautiful places on earth. But Grand Canyon is not just in the news because of its beauty. It has also been named the deadliest national park in America, with about one death occurring every month. So, being old and not wanting to die unnecessarily, I guess I need to pay attention. Understanding how people die at Grand Canyon not only satisfies a morbid curiosity, but it also can encourage logical caution, kind of like driving a big car. It might keep me from dying from an avoidable accident. And the top cause of death at Grand Canyon, something that surprised me a bit and I will talk about last, is probably the most easily avoidable. To start with, snake bites are a likely culprit. However, there are no reported snake bite deaths at Grand Canyon. In fact, there are no reported deaths from animal attacks at the canyon at all. The animal that causes the most injury is the rock squirrel. There have been 39 murders at the canyon, including one in 1993, where a man pushed his third wife off a cliff, later explaining it was easier than getting a divorce. There have been 91 reported suicides at the canyon, 75 by jumping off the edge of the canyon, and 13 who drove over the edge, perhaps influenced by the final scene in the Thelma and Louise movie. Speaking of someone who dyes his hair, did Brad Pitt ever really look that young? Now, the top four causes of death. Number four is drowning. About 100 people have drowned at the canyon. It's a desert area, but don't forget the canyon was carved by the powerful Colorado River, which is frequently rafted. Also, flash floods can rise quickly. The 14-year-old son of the founder of Merrill Shoes drowned while crossing Tapeats Creek in 2017. Number three is falls, which, excluding suicide, have killed 123. Included in that number is the first recorded death from a fall in 1925 of a man who set up his camera, stepped in front to take his photo, and tripped and fell, becoming perhaps the very first recorded incident of a person dying taking a selfie. Number two is weather-related deaths. There have been no reported deaths from lightning strikes, but 124 people have died from weather-related causes, of whom about 100 were from dehydration, including two this year. Falls and weather-related deaths are thankfully generally avoidable. Using hiking poles, for example, can greatly reduce the risk of accidental falls. In my Tips for Older Hikers video, I was hesitant about including two specific tips because they seem so simplistic, but they've turned out to be the most broadly appreciated tips. That is, watch every step and stop before you look. And that's especially important at Grand Canyon. These tips, along with using hiking poles, can greatly reduce the risk of death from falls. Experience and proper equipment can similarly greatly reduce the risk of weather-related problems. The final and biggest cause of death at Grand Canyon is also one of the most avoidable. 379 people have died in air crashes at the canyon. This includes 128 who died when two airlines crashed over the canyon in 1956. 
but even excluding the deaths from that air disaster, air crashes remain the number one cause of death at Grand Canyon. So, to avoid the most common cause of death at the canyon, you might want to skip that bucket list air tour. Before we close, let me cover some administrative items. I think the greatest strength of my videos is content. I strive to provide accurate information. I do a bit of research before making a video. But on the other hand, I think I go light on entertainment, which I guess would make these videos more enjoyable. Today's video is the first of some upcoming hybrid videos where I'll try to incorporate both content and entertainment. Please let me know in the comments if this is successful and if you would prefer one style over the other. Finally, I'll acknowledge the elephant in the room and my greatest weakness. I adopted the Mr. Dinosaur name as a bit of a joke in my senior on YouTube video because I was saying I was a technological dinosaur and also that I would never be Mr. Beast, who's seemingly the most successful person on YouTube. Out of that was born the name Mr. Dinosaur. I otherwise would never label myself as Mr. except in jest. But the biggest weakness in my videos is the production quality, especially the sound. I never expected that so many people would watch my videos, and I'm humbled by the viewership and the kind comments. But even I cringe when I review some of the videos. When I started this, I vowed not to put any money into this project, and I also vowed to never beg for subscribers. Well, I've put about $100 in now, getting a $20 microphone, a tripod, and a memory stick for an overloaded iPhone, so I guess my vows are broken. I don't receive anything from anyone for making these videos, and I could never see accepting sponsorships or product placements. That just doesn't fit with my values. But YouTube places ads on every video with over 100 views, and I have no control over that. If 250 more people subscribe to this channel, YouTube will begin paying me a few dollars of that ad revenue. If they pay me, my intent is to put that money back into production equipment, starting with a quality microphone. YouTube has funneled me into a lane of making videos about hiking and aging, and I'm okay with that because I'm old and I love hiking. No problem. But I watched YouTube for five years and I never opened an account and I never subscribed to a channel. And I expect most of my viewers are similar. So I won't beg for subscribers, but I will offer you this. If I get 250 more subscribers and YouTube shares revenue with me, you will benefit from improved video production quality, starting with better quality sound. So with those housekeeping matters cleared up, I'll close as usual by thanking you for watching this video. Thank you.